Welcome to Expose the Ice by the Crappie Chronicles, presented by Clam Outdoors. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Expose the Ice, powered by Dakota Lithium. Today, we're talking about dissecting new water to find crappies. And the one thing we want to jump into immediately on this is that the One Boat Network app through Humminbird is what we use pretty much exclusively to find these things. And this year, super cool deal, we're giving away a one year subscription to the One Boat Network app in every single episode. So including this one, so like, comment, subscribe, and you'll be entered to win a one year subscription to the One Boat Network app. Okay, so if you wanna see how I break, break down water um, when I get to a new body of water. So we went out to Maine, um, it's season three, episode 10. Along this basin here, there's a couple little little tips out here. I'm gonna go check that. Kinda of just look for some life. I might go down here. There's a nice neck down area right in here. Good solid eight and a half. I don't know if you guys can see that, but. First fish of Maine, it's the perch. But not a big one. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, the first main crappie, and it's a freaking stud. Look at that guy. Oh, beautiful fish. Look at that. 13, right on the 13 incher first main crappie. How cool is that? Booyah! 13 incher, first one, boys. Shallow, in the weeds. Sick, there's more down there. Gonna get them. There's a weed line, so right here in front of me, like about 10 feet in front of me, there's a weed line. I actually drilled a set of holes right just inside the weed line, and then I'm on the outside of the weed line here. And you can see I drilled another set down that way. Um, but what these fish are doing, I can see them on live, is they're actually not in the weeds. They're just running like this, back and forth down this edge. It's pretty cool. So I'm just going to kind of work down here and see if I can't find a little bit more of a concentration of fish. Uh, me and Bart got out there a couple days before the other guys got there and Bart just let me run wild and I go out on a lake that I've never been to 2,000 miles away from home and I broke it down the way I like to break it down and I think I found fish within the first hour and uh, I just did a process of elimination you know I started shallow worked out into the basin worked my way up to the weed line figured out where the good weeds are started catching them um, so on this map why don't you show us kind of how you would break down this is a huge body of water yep. where would you start on this well, what I would do is I wouldn't be going out here. Obviously, it's a massive, massive area. Um, also, this area here is massive. So what I would do is I would try to find these smaller areas, like this over here, um, these little smaller basins, these little inside turns, little neck down areas like this, little hole in the flat. Um, just narrow it down so you're not trying to cover this whole thing, which might take you days to find them. And if you may never find them out there because they move so much in these massive areas. So. Break it down, um, try to find the hot spots in these areas. So like on this map here, you got a couple inside turns. Um, you got this basin leading up towards this flat and it kind of neck down area right here. So I would start out here, work my way in, follow that. And then you got this big flat. So if it's a clear water lake, um, you could find weeds in there. You check on this point. Yeah, you just got to kind of do your research and pick where you want to go. Don't get out there and just kind of start going, you know, get, uh, do a little prepare, uh, prepare a little bit, figure out where you want to go, what's going to be your highest percentage areas, and then just go from there. Yeah, and a big body of water, it can be really overwhelming when you're looking at those type of lake maps. So 
what we like to do is take a big body of water and break it down and treat each like bay of the lake as a whole lake by itself and just try to figure out where the fish are in that particular portion of the lake versus the whole thing all together because it can be pretty pretty frustrating. Right. So another thing that we like to do is use Google Earth or just aerial imagery in general. So the One Boat Network app is really great because you can switch between the two. The time, the only time we really use that is when we're targeting backwater areas because you can see um, you know, a lot of different types of structure, high spots, even shallow water, you can actually see into it if the water's clear enough. Over basins and things like that, it's pretty much useless. So we pretty much exclusively use that for river backwaters, but it can help you find shallow weed beds in clear water too. Yeah, absolutely. So when you get to a new body of water, the number one thing you're gonna look for immediately is when you drill a hole and you're like, what is the water clarity here? Or you can find it on the DNR site, I suppose, before yeah. you get there. But Sometimes dirty lakes clear up in the winter. So drill a hole, figure out what the water clarity is. General rule of thumb, if it's really clear, the fish are probably gonna position in extremes. So either really shallow or really deep. Now, when you get to more of a dirty water lake, so I would say under four foot of water clarity probably, they're gonna position in that middle water column. So anywhere from seven to 15 kinda, I, I would yeah. look around there, that'll be your best bet. And then, uh, yeah, when you're in clear water, that's where we run into those weed bites and they'll go into that moderate range. But when you're going to a new body of water, you're probably not experimenting with that right away, but you're trying to find fish. And the number one important thing there is what, Waldo? Process of elimination. So you look at your obvious pieces of structure, you know, your points, your inside turns, your humps and your flats. Um, and you let the, the water clarity oftentimes depict on what depth range you're gonna start in first. So usually what we'll do is we'll use a DNR survey uh, Secchi Dix reading, and that'll be able to tell us you know, how clear the water is and what depths we should start looking in. We adjust the depth highlight on our Lake Master chips, and then from there, we will then be able to pretty much just start a milk run, especially on a new body of water. We just start whatever piece of structure is usually closest to us and we just work our way down and we hit every point inside turn and obvious piece of structure on the way to finishing pretty much the, the ring. And we usually start at one end and then we just finish back where we had started and if we don't find fish, sometimes we, we, just, go to a different lake. we just go to a different lake. But that's the easiest way to do it is adjusting your depth highlights, picking all the obvious structure in that depth highlight, and then you know just looking for signs of life is the big thing. Yeah, absolutely. If you guys want a good episode example of us going through different lakes, uh, different depths, different structures. You can go to season three, episode four, Northwoods Lake Hopping and watch us hop to a bunch of different lakes and look for fish. It's kind of a little bit of a struggle, but there's some bomb Mexican food in it, so you can watch that. Okay, so we're out on a new lake. We have never been here before, so what that means is we look at our Lake Master chips and turn on live and we just go poke around until we find life. Oh, there's a fish. There is actually a fish. On him. <laughs> <laughs> One hole. That's five targets in. Hooked up. Oh, it's a little bigger. Ten incher. Saw a little one. They're still down there, so I'm just gonna put them back and get right back down. Another little one. All right, we're getting them to sit still, but we need some bigs now. These are freaking dinkers. Oh. Just another little guy. Little guy. Another little one. This sucked, we're leaving. Now we looked around, we just found small ones and then we're like, we'll look around the rest of the lake and we didn't see any fish. So we're gonna go somewhere else. When you also get to a new body of water, the time of winter is gonna help you decide what depth they're gonna be in. Early ice, in the fall, fish push out, they get outside the weed edges, edges of the basin, they're excited, 
they're getting out there. So you're going to start looking around kind of out there normally, typically. Once you get to midwinter, uh, that's when your permanent ice houses tend to show up. So now you're using pressure to move your fish around as well. You're also going to start to get fish moving towards oxygen, whether mm -hmm. that be weeds, uh, streams, springs, stuff like that. And then the dark days of winter, um, going to be honest, sometimes it gets pretty tough. They yeah. just don't really want to bite. You've seen us go through that. It's that uh, February time frame. Yeah, it just yeah. gets a little rough and... The dark days. Yeah. That's February. Yes. Uh, but the good news is when you get to laid ice, they tend to go shallower. They're getting around whatever weeds are there. Uh, you got new water flowing into the lake. They're obviously going to start pushing up. And a uh, good another good episode of us going through a checklist on a new body of water, and especially in the middle of winter is season three episode seven welcome to the upper peninsula of michigan go out there find some new fish uh in basins on mud transitions so over here right there 20 feet or do you want to go after bigger yeah those are the ones are over here turn to that turn to that those other two were swimming that direction when they came like this it's a turn they're swimming straight away from you, you can't see it, like literally. Like I was watching them over there and they kept swimming at me and they would just disappear. Right there, okay, right there 40. Yeah. Here, drill one at 20 and then drill one at 40. Gold, that thing is. Sick. My first UP crappie. That's a good one. Heck yeah. Look at that. Beautiful fish. That thing came in and destroyed that thing. Doesn't feel tiny. Oh, it's a giant. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> that was sick. I thought that was going to be way smaller than that. <laughs> All right, so Griff just caught one too. We just started going literally across this basin here. We came up over a little point and uh, the map for this lake isn't that great. So we just wanted to start exploring kind of like big open areas. God, these are beasts, dude. Really goldfish here too, which is awesome. Super stained water. God, that's a pretty one. That's probably that's 14 and a half at least. For sure. Slab 14. city. But that one's on the schoolie. It didn't fight super hard initially, but as soon as they got to the hole, it did not want to come up. We got a decent amount of ice here, but dope fish. Waldo's hooked up right now too. That's another good one. But Waldo, we talked about it a little bit. We got crowds. Yeah, they're not always bad. You know, oftentimes we actually look for crowds. Um, they're fishing there for a reason. Oftentimes there are fish around, but we have a very strategic way of using crowds. And oftentimes we look for the, the areas where the crowds necessarily aren't really stacked up on. So if you have a big basin and you have an area of that basin where nobody's at, that's where we like to start. And usually that area is what we call a quiet area where all the noise of generators, trucks driving will actually push fish over to. Um, and then we like to think outside the box a lot. You know, we like to try different things. Um, sometimes we'll just throw a dart at the map, you know, and try it out and it might not be the most obvious looking spot and there might not even be a hole drilled in the area but oftentimes that's where we typically find fish and it works out pretty well yeah if you go through the checklist of obvious structure and you're not finding fish sometimes you just look at the map and you're like well there's break over there that has literally nothing on it so we might as well try that yeah do nothing banks can yeah do nothing banks can be great mm -hmm. so one more example of a great episode you guys see us go to a lot of new bodies of water but last year we did uh season three episode nine sunrise reservoir crappies <laughs> Yeah. 
There's a tank. The Sika Mackie Minnow X, the Silky Mackie Mini Minnow. Oh, I can't even talk right now. The Silky Mackie Minnow XL. Beautiful. That's a perfect eater right there. Let's get back down there quick. Got another fish down there. It's already racing up to meet me. There's another good one. Get back down there. The Silky is just doing its job. Ooh, they're already coming back. Doink. They're doinking. Absolutely on fire. It's meeting me again. Oh. Another good one. All right, Waldo, talk to me. I am absolutely smashing them right now. Watch this. I'm gonna get back down there. Oh, it's already meeting me. Woohoo! Bye bye. Eaters are flying up the hole right now. We're in like five foot of water, super shallow, and uh, these fish are just coming unglued. This is a prime example of just going out, going through a checklist, smashing them immediately and having a good time. So other than that, when we get to a new body of water, we get into techniques and we like to keep them simple. So Pink and Griff will dive into some of those. Now we're gonna get into a little bit about the equipment we would use for breaking down a new body of water. We like to keep things as simple as possible like this because we know some baits that work pretty much all the time. So we like to focus on those so we're not constantly changing and adding more variables into what we're doing. So I know it sounds repetitive. We're talking about a lot of the same baits and tackle over and over and over again, but we wanna hammer that home that it's like, you don't need a thousand baits to really make this work. A few key baits can really get things rolling in your favor and then you can dial it in from there. So the two setups we like the most most for doing this. One would be Bart's Chronicle. Tripwire on the end of it. It's really good for bite detection. We can run smaller uh, tungstens and plastics on that with the Spooler Elite. It's awesome setup. You can run and gun. It doesn't matter if you get a little snow in there. It doesn't foul up your system. The other one would be the Waldo's Chronicle. This is a great one for a little bit bigger baits. We love the pinhead minnow on this. It's our bread and butter bait. Pretty much any time we're, we're looking for basin fish or something like that, the first thing we're going to try to get them to eat is this. If it doesn't work, we're switching from there. But this with a spooler lead on it, deadly, deadly bait for breaking down water. Yeah, so like Pink said, we use the pinhead minnow. Um, this is a drop kick with a Jamie XL on it. But a new bait that really got us excited, um, we got to use it last year, and that's the Tika Flash. Uh, this thing- Deadly. Ab absolutely deadly. Deadly. Um, believe the hype. What you see, I, I know a lot of people see social media and they just feel like you're just pushing the bait just because um, you're sponsored by them or whatnot. Not the case in this with this bait. Um, we absolutely smashed them on it last year. I believe I caught my biggest crappie on this bait last year. Um, and then as far as plastics go, when you get on a lake, don't make it too complicated. Just kind of go, if you're in clear water, your natural colors, your reds, your white, um, your green pumpkins, your motor oil. And then if you're on dirtier water, use something they can see. So you use a white, a black, chartreuse. Um, just give them a visual so they can find you a little easier. And then uh, when you're breaking down the lake, you want to be mobile. So we like to use the clam conversion kit. Um, this thing really is super light. I mean, you can go all day. Um, these things drill a ton of holes on one battery and you don't really need to carry a ton of batteries. And then we like to run a float suit so you don't die. Uh, that's obvious. <laughs> um, and there's a couple different options for that. You got the Rise, the Delta, Ascent, and the Defender. Um, Bart wears the Defender because he doesn't like to get cold. Uh, but yeah, then we also use, besides the one boat network, we also use the Lake Master chip. Yeah, and getting into that with, you know, the mobile units using live and sometimes 360, but live is really kind of our, our staple for finding fish, especially in open water. And being able to put those cards in here is game changing for us really because we can look and find places that we didn't even know existed before we ever even set foot on the lake so between that and a vexlar we run dakota lithium batteries and everything keep things light so we can run and gun all day long without wearing ourselves out and it's easy to just move gear around especially when you're carrying all this stuff right 
Well, thank you for watching this episode of Expose the Ice. See you next time.